Hey, this is Jessica Beale, and I'm going undercover on the internet. It's actually me. Instagram. Is it still strange to see your face on a billboard? Yes, I think it is still a little bit strange. It's also completely normal, which is strange. It's weird. It's big. What are the chances we will ever see a Seventh Heaven reboot? I'm currently re-watching it on Amazon. Such a great show. It's so nice. Thank you. It was a great show. I don't know about a Seventh Heaven reboot. Genuinely, I've heard some talks about it. I don't really know how real it is, to be honest. But yeah, it's possible. Posted. Is acting still your first love compared to producing or even writing? That's such a good question, actually. I think so. Your interests kind of evolve and change as you get older, and I still love it, absolutely. But I, I, I'm definitely feeling the pull of being behind the camera a, a lot more these days. So it is still currently, but I'm enjoying doing both of those things, or all three of those things, and probably hope to do more of the producing and the writing in the future. At Jessica Beale, how come no sinner this year? We couldn't really find a way that felt authentic to, to bring Cora back into that story. We thought of everything. I mean, would she be Bill Pullman, you know, Harry Ambrose, the character, the detective, would, could she be his sort of sidekick? And could they investigate together? Could she be his expert on mental health issues? How, can, can her experience help him to understand the mind or the behaviors of someone who has possibly committed a crime? And we thought of everything. Could they, could there be a love interest thing? Like, what can we do here that, that really feels like you'd want to see this story continue and nothing felt right. Everything felt forced and it felt stronger to just leave it alone and end it there. I mean, it's possible that you could meet up with her again, I guess, in another season because every season is such a one-off story. But I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know if we're gonna go in that direction. Posted. How is it juggling family and business when you and hubby are both in the entertainment fields? I think juggling family and business, no matter what field you're in, is hard. Always a challenge for anybody trying to work and trying to have a family and find that balance between it all. In the entertainment field, it's kind of a double-edged sword because your partner really understands what you're doing and really understands the time requirements and how weird it is and the strange things that have to happen and how much time you have to spend away and you know you really understand that as well for your partner but it's hard because since you're both in the business you can both be gone at the same time you know it's, it would almost sometimes it's like is it easier if someone just has a a very more traditional job and then someone else is kind of doing crazy stuff. But when you're both doing unorthodox things, it can be really hard. Sometimes you just never see each other. So it can be, it can be really good and it can be you know, a real challenge at the same time. Posted. Wikipedia. While growing up, Beale played soccer and trained as a level six gymnast. True. I think you can start competing as a level five gymnast. So it was just about to be competing, I think, in level six. That's like round off back handspring, you're on the vault, you're not flipping on the vault yet, you're doing cartwheels on the beam, you're just kind of getting into a much more difficult set of tricks and your routines are gonna be more complex. So I was like, not really there yet, but almost there. IMDB. Collects vintage glasses with no lenses. Yes, okay, that was true a long time ago. When I was, I think around 14 or something, I was working in Vancouver at the time. And I gotta say, I thought I was pretty cool wearing those glasses with no lenses. <laughs> like, no lenses at all. You know, you, you get older and you learn stuff. 
That wasn't so cool, I, I don't think. Audition for a role in American Beauty, 1999. Not true, actually. I've heard this before. I mean, unless I have literally like a, a, a blackout time in my life, with, which is possible, I do not believe that I auditioned for a role in American Beauty. Submit. Her first acting job was in a Pringles commercial when she was 11 years old. I think that's definitely true. I think 11. And was it the first? I think it was. I think that's pretty true. I think my parents were originally going to name me Snowmobile. So I guess in that respect, Jessica was a real win for me. That was always obviously not 100% real, but they, my parents, they would just mess with my brother and I and, you know, and say, yeah, we could have named you Snowmo and Automo, so you should, you should feel lucky about your lives. Because yeah, that would have been a real disaster, I think, going through life with Snowmo or Automo. Twitter. Jessica Biel never got credit for being a beast. <laughs> Look at her arms in Blade Trinity. How was she not Laura Croft or Electra if you're gonna cast a white woman? Where was Jessica Biel's action career? I am mad about this. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of that. That is, that makes me feel great. You know, good question. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure if I wanted an action career more than I already had one. I kind of, I really kind of, was able to do a couple of films like that, which, which was really fun. These arms are ridiculous. They are humongous and too big, gen genuinely speaking. They're terrifying looking, if you, <laughs> if you ask me. Your career just goes in a certain way. And thank goodness my arms have de de deflated since then. Nice look. Is the bag so that you don't get food out the outfit underneath? It's actually fashion. Did you know that the first time Jessica Biel gave someone an autograph, she asked for one in return? I did do that, I believe. I was so embarrassed. I just got, I just got embarrassed and I was like, hey, can I have yours? You know, like, uh, yeah. I just felt really shy about it. Okay, now that I'm done with Handmaid's Tale, I don't know what to do with myself. Dying for season three, but what show should I get into next? My mom is recommending The Sinner with Jessica Biel Thoughts. I think I responded to Kim. Kim, I think I responded to you and said, absolutely do it. I think she watched it. I feel like maybe she watched it and commented on it. Anyway, I hope you liked it. Next. Please help me. What kind of workouts or weightlifting should I do to get arms like hers? The arm thing, guys. Number one, it's kind of a genetic thing. My mom has arms like this, my dad, my brother, and then just a lot of hard work, a lot of circuit training, a lot of yoga, and a lot of Pilates. And you can do it but don't let them get that big, okay? That's too big. Did I just defend the fitness world, like the real serious fitness world <laughs> by saying that? I hope not, no offense meant. It's just too big for me. Cora. Cora? What is that? Cora? <laughs> this is making me feel really old. <laughs> Cora, okay. What's the most embarrassing thing that Jessica Biel has done? I probably can't. I can't think of the most embarrassing thing, but I probably can't share it with you because it was so embarrassing. I don't want to relive it. How does the acting differ when a person is both the lead actor slash actress and producer like Jessica Biel? Well, you sort of have to wear two hats, obviously, and you have to split your time when you're on set, but also focus when you're working as an actor that day and not worry about the minutia, not worry about the budget, not worry about what's going on with that crew member and not worry about the location that we lost, you know, all of these things that producers do and have to really pay attention to and work out problems. They're, they're basically problem solvers and fire putter outers. But how it also differs is when you're producing it, a show or a film or whatever, you can really develop the character from the beginning with the writer. You can be a part of the, the whole process. You can have a voice in it. And that, for me, from a creative standpoint, is the most exciting part of the puzzle. Doing all your research as the character while you're developing it, so the second you step on set, you feel like you've already been standing in the shoes of this person, and it's a much smoother transition. Because usually I feel like when you're doing a show or a film, 
by the time you've gotten to about the last week of filming, you go, oh, now I get it. Now I understand who this person is because you've finally been living it for so long. But if you can live it before you actually step on set, then it's alive for you in a much different way. How did Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel meet? We really technically met and had a conversation when I was invited to a birthday party that Justin was throwing for a friend of his and met him at that birthday party. Submit. Thank you guys. Thank you, internet, for all of your questions um, and your interest in me and my personal life. See you soon.